Hey y'all, I'm Ivy Odom, a test kitchen professional in the Southern Living Test Kitchen, and this is What's Cooking with Southern Living. Today, an old school classic recipe, squash casserole. This is the standard for squash casserole, the best recipe that I have ever had. In prime squash season in the summer, squash can come in all shapes and sizes. In the early days of the Americas when the Native Americans were farming squash, there were so many varieties of summer squash, patty pan squash, crook neck squash, yellow squash, zucchini, you name it, they had so many varieties. For this particular recipe, we're using yellow squash, but a really great substitution is the crook neck squash, which is also yellow. The only difference is the neck of the squash is kind of crooked like a hook. The very first thing that we need to do is cut our squash. The recipe calls for five medium yellow squash. These are really big, so I'm using four and I'm going to slice them just into rounds. Classic squash casserole recipes are a little bit different than the squash casserole recipe that I am using today. Some differences that we have adapted, bigger squash pieces, inclusion of cheese, and then also traditional squash casserole recipes are more of like a squash souffle or custard and they do not include a crunchy cracker buttery topping. Whereas our squash casserole recipe that we're using today does include that. Now I'm going to chop an onion. You can use a yellow onion, you could use a sweet onion. My personal favorite is a Vidalia onion, which Vidalia onions can be found in farmer's markets and grocery stores right alongside the squash. And the sweetness of that onion is just a perfect pairing for yellow squash. I'm going to go ahead and melt three tablespoons of butter. While I'm waiting on my butter, there are a few other things for this recipe that I need to use my cutting board for. One of them being fresh thyme leaves. So I'm going to rough chop. So I've already taken these off of the stem. Thyme stems are very woody and hard and you do not want to eat those. And the next thing I need my cutting board for is grating some cheese. I'm going to be using Swiss and cheddar. I love the combo, that sharpness of Swiss cheese kind of mellows out the heavy dairy that we are putting in this recipe. And then the cheddar cheese is a little bit more mild and it also pairs great with the rest of the ingredients. Grating your own cheese is the way to go, especially if you're going to be melting it. Pre-shredded cheese actually has an anti-caking powder to kind of keep the shreds from sticking together in the packaging at the grocery store. That actually helps prevent the cheese from melting properly. And so grating your own cheese is super, super important. Perfect timing because all of my butter has melted in the skillet and I can add my squash and onions. I've got my skillet over about medium high heat and I'm going to saute for about 10 minutes until the centers are tender and the outside edges are still crisp because they're going to continue cooking in the oven and by the time they're all finished baking, they will be the perfect texture for this squash casserole. What is great about squash and a lot of other summer vegetables is when you pick them, you can actually slice them and freeze them and they freeze beautifully so that you can preserve the produce at its peak ripeness and be able to use it all throughout the year. That's why we can still have some amazing squash casseroles during the holidays because this is probably one of the most popular holiday recipes, especially in the South. It has been about 10 minutes and the squash and onions are perfectly cooked. I'm going to turn off the heat. Then I need to drain my squash and onions. This step is probably the most important step about this recipe. If you've had a runny squash casserole, it is a bad squash casserole and you need to drain all of this excess liquid into a colander and you don't need to just drain it and move on. You need to drain it and let it sit in the colander for about five minutes to ensure that all of that liquid gets out of the skillet and out of the squash. The rest of the ingredients in this squash casserole are 
what make this squash casserole the best squash casserole I have ever had. We have eggs. I'm using two large eggs. Whisk those up before I add in my other ingredients. Instead of using cream or half and half in this recipe, we are using sour cream and mayonnaise. Sour cream is a lot thicker than heavy cream and half and half and has that tang in it and is perfect with the sweetness of the squash and the onion and creates that velvet custard-like texture. And then the addition of the mayonnaise, once you've had the squash casserole, you will never go back to not putting mayonnaise in your squash casseroles again. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of salt, some black pepper, and then the thyme that I chopped up earlier. Whisk them together, and then I'm gonna fold in my shredded cheddar and Swiss and the drained squash and onions. Look how much liquid drained out of this. So much liquid, all of that would have ended up in the casserole and it would have made it runny and that's not delicious. Be pretty gentle whenever you are folding your squash and onions in. You don't want to mash your squash in any way. It's okay if some of it gets broken down, but you're trying to preserve the shape of the squash. But you do wanna make sure that all your ingredients are well incorporated. Now that this mixture is ready to go, I'm gonna set it off to the side, and then we need to prepare our baking dish and get the crispy Ritz cracker buttery topping that goes on top. I have some softened room temperature butter that I am going to spread all inside of the baking dish. Once your dish is well greased, you are ready to transfer your squash mixture and then we get to get out a little bit of our frustrations by pounding these Ritz crackers in a Ziploc bag. You can't be too rough with the rolling pin because you want these to be pretty big crumbs. Get my cheese grater back out and I need to grate a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. For the cheddar and Swiss cheeses, I use the big holes of a box grater. For my Parmesan cheese, I am going to use the small holes or you could even use a microplane to get really fine shreds of Parmesan. There's my melted butter. You could just do the Ritz crackers and the butter, but I love the addition of the Parmesan cheese. It is salty and just adds such a good flavor. I'm going to spread this cracker topping evenly over my baking dish. Sometimes I feel like casserole recipes kind of skimp on the cracker topping, but this is not one of those recipes. Okay, it is time to put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we can check those Facebook comments in our What's Cooking Facebook group. There are always so many opinions about all of our Southern recipes. The first comment as related to this squash casserole recipe is, I made it for friends here in Oregon. Everyone was wild about it and wanted the recipe. Laura says, I made this tonight and my husband exclaims, Where's the chicken? Is this a thing? I've never put chicken in squash casserole before. Melissa, yes, I added chicken to the squash casserole I made last week. Just, uh, I wanted a more complete meal, so let's try this out thing. I love the way Melissa thinks. She thinks a lot like me in the kitchen. She just had some chicken on hand. She wanted it to be a one dish wonder. She threw chicken in her squash casserole, and there you have it. There are so many variations of squash casserole. Southern Living has covered all of them. We include so many different stirrings for squash casserole, chicken being one of them. Oh my goodness, it is perfectly golden brown. Those crispy, buttery Ritz crackers on the top. It is going to be velvety smooth with that nice custard with tons of flavor from the cheese and the mayonnaise. The squash shape has been preserved and I'm gonna love the crisp, tender bite of the squash. My mouth is watering just talking and thinking about it. It is no wonder that squash casserole is among some of the most requested and celebrated casserole recipes in the South. Mmm. One of my all-time favorite recipes, whether you make it in the summer when squash is at its prime, or you put up your squash in the summer to preserve the freshness and ripeness, and you make it for your holiday table, 
It is a classic Southern recipe that you need to make this season.